Hello everyone. I am Fani from Google Cloud CPG. Welcome to the second part of the third video on 503 service unavailable error under the Edge Runtime Errors module of the APG troubleshooting series. In this video, I'll show you how to troubleshoot and resolve TLS handshake failures between APG Edge and the backend service. To be able to follow the troubleshooting information in this video, you should have an APG Edge account. And if you haven't watched the previous videos in the Edge Runtime Errors module of the APG troubleshooting series, I suggest you to check them out using this link. Specifically, if you have not watched the first part of the third video on troubleshooting TLS handshake failures, I suggest you stop here and watch the first part. The first part on troubleshooting TLS handshake failure discusses in depth about various causes of the TLS handshake failures that occur between APG Edge and the backend service. I will now demonstrate how to troubleshoot and resolve TLS handshake failure caused due to an incorrect client certificate in APG Edge. Consider the sample API proxy demo API, which is configured with two way TLS. The backend service configured with this API proxy is demo target.apg.net. In case of two way TLS, the backend service requests the message processor to send its TLS certificate for client authentication during the TLS handshake process. The backend service sends a list of acceptable CA certificates to the message processor that are valid for the client authentication to succeed. The key elements to be noted for two way TLS in target endpoint configuration are client auth enabled field, which should be set to true. Key store and key alias should point to the right key store reference and alias respectively. Let's see what happens when I invoke this API. Oops, you can see we are getting 503 errors. Notice that there is no fault string or error response associated with these errors. As usual, I'll use the API monitoring dashboard to find the details about these failures. The failed API calls are showing up under the fault code messaging.adapters.http.flow.errorresponse code. The fault source for these failures is set as target. You can see the target name is also listed in the bottom right corner. The fault code, error response, and fault source target clearly indicate that we are getting 503 error from the backend service as opposed to APG in the TLS handshake failure demo that I showed in the part one of video three. If you enable the UI transition over these API calls, we get the same information. In order to debug this issue further and determine the root cause, we can capture network packets using TCP dump tool and analyze them. If you are a public cloud user, then capture the network packets on the backend server. If you are a private cloud user, then capture the network packets either on the backend server or on the servers where the APG Edge message processor component is running. I will use a private cloud setup, which is running the same demo API proxy with the same backend service and two-way TLS configuration for demo purposes. I will initiate the TCP dump tool to capture the network packets in the host where the message processor is running in the private cloud environment. Here is the TCP dump command to capture the network packets going to the backend service demo-target.apg.net. I will now make the calls to API proxy in a separate terminal. All right, the 503 errors have been reproduced. The TCP dump must have captured these packets as well. Open the TCP dump in Wireshark to analyze the packets. There are so many packets here. Select a packet and right click to follow the TCP stream. We will investigate the TCP packets related to this stream one by one. You can see that the client, that is message processor, sends syn packet to the backend server. Then the backend server sends syn ACK packet to the message processor. Finally, the message processor sends an ACK back to the backend server. With this, the three-way TCP handshake is successfully completed and the message processor has established the connection with the backend server. Then the message processor initiated the TLS handshake by sending the client hello in this packet. The backend service has responded with the server hello message. You can see the certificate request message in this packet. 
This is seen only in a two-way TLS as the backend server is requesting the message processor to send its certificate. The message processor responds back to the backend server. Oh no, in the next packet, we see that the encrypted alert is sent by the backend service. This is followed by the fin, finish flag to close the connection. The message processor, having received the fin packet, closed the connection by sending RST flag to the backend service. So now we need to determine why the backend service is sending the encrypted alert. We will first examine the packet before the encrypted alert where the message processor responded to the backend service. Oh, the message processor is not even sending the client certificate because the value of certificate length is zero. This is the reason why the backend service is unable to verify the client certificate and hence responding with a 503 error. You can verify if the same TCP packet pattern is observed in the TCP dump for a few more APA calls which are failing. Next step is to investigate why the message processor is unable to send the client certificate even though the certificate exists in its key store. Typically, this can happen if the client is a Java-based application which does validation ahead of the time before sending the client certificates. That is, the client basically checks the list of acceptable CA certificates from the server and sends its certificate to the server only if it has one or more acceptable CA certificates in its key store. In APGH, the message processor, which is the client, is a Java-based application and it does this validation before sending the certificate to the backend server. Let's re-examine the TCP dump. Check the server hello packet sent by the backend service to find out the list of acceptable CA certificates for client certificate authentication. You can see this information under the certificate request section. The backend service is requesting the message processor to send the TLS certificate issued by Let's Encrypt CA. So the acceptable CA is Let's Encrypt. Check the key store used by the APE proxy to see if it has the proper client certificate. Use the Edge UI to determine the corresponding key store and the certificate stored in it. You can see here, the demo API hyphen key store hyphen ref is the reference used by the APA proxy to refer to the key store. This reference points to the demo API hyphen key store. Click on the demo API hyphen key store. The CN value of the TLS certificate in the key store is correct that is demoapi.apg.net. Examine the issuer. Oh no, the issuer is not let's encrypt CA which is required by the backend service. This is the cause of the failure. To fix this error, all we need to do is create a new key store with a valid key and certificate acceptable by the backend service. Update the key store reference used by the APA proxy to point to this new key store. I have created a new key store by name demo API hyphen good hyphen key store with a valid TLS certificate issued by Let's Encrypt CA. I have also updated the demo API hyphen key store hyphen ref to point to this new key store. Let me invoke the API calls again. There you go, the API calls are finally giving successful responses. To summarize, we saw TLS handshake failures caused due to an incorrect client certificate stored in the key store. We resolved the issue by ensuring that we have a valid client certificate in the message processor key store. Beware, the response code for API requests can either be 503 service unavailable error or 400 bad request or something else when a backend service detects an issue with certificates during TLS handshake. The response code and error message is purely dependent on the backend service implementation in these kind of cases. In this video, you learned how to troubleshoot and resolve TLS handshake failures. Check out the video description for more information on 503 service unavailable errors and TLS handshake failures and relevant troubleshooting playbooks for your easy reference. And if you would like to know more about other possible causes of 503 service unavailable errors, please watch other videos in this module and subscribe to our channel if you would like to get notified on the future videos. Thanks. See you in the next video.